So as I mentioned, my name's Meg, and today we will be talking about finding geospatial data sets to augment and supplement the research data that you guys create. We will go through what data licenses are, UML access points, and we will explore some different um, open data portals that are available to you. We will talk about library resources and go through workflows for submitting data requests to legal counsel. And then at the end, talk about a bit of a couple of research integration tips just to make your lives easier. So the two main types of data licenses that we're going to be talking about today are open data and then proprietary data sets. And open data is defined by the Government of Canada as structured data that is machine readable, freely shared, used and built on without restrictions. And so the key things to think about here are open data are available as a whole at no, at no cost, and you can do whatever it is you want with them. You can do profit generating activities, so you can freelance using those open data sets. You can create derivative data sets by combining them with your own data. Um, the world is your oyster when it comes to truly open data sets. In the capitalist society that we live in these days, there are some publishers and vendors making what they claim are open data sets, but then they put uh, restrictions on what you can use it for. And so there is open and then there is open in quotation marks. So it's up to you to find that license that's associated with your data files and make sure you give it a quick skim or an in-depth read, depending on what you're doing with it, just to make sure you don't break those terms of the license. And then licensed data or proprietary data is data set that is are data sets that are created by a vendor and they have very explicit terms of use. And so if you think about the city of Winnipeg, for example, they have license they have data sets that they license as open. So you can, and we will explore downloading them from their website. Um, and you can do whatever with them. But then they also share data sets with the University of Manitoba. Our legal counsel has talked to their legal counsel, and we have an agreement that we can share certain data sets with you guys for research and education purposes. There is no commercial licensing in that happens in that. Um, if you were to use their data for commercial purposes, you and the library and the university could get sued. Um, so proprietary data has specific stipulations that are attached to it. The main thing to take it from this is always make sure to read your license. And if you don't know, if you accidentally, or if you downloaded a bunch of data and you didn't think to download those license files, it is worth it to trace your steps back and try and find them. So if we're thinking about finding data, the first thing to do is step back and think about what you already have. So in that, what have you created? Um, because when you know what you've created, then you'll know how you can augment it. So if you've created, if you have gone out and surveyed a bunch of nest sites or something like that, then you know that you have the latitudes and longitudes for those those nesting, those bird nest sites. Um, but just bird nest sites in isolation don't have a lot of meaning or context associated with them. So you might think, oh, okay, maybe I want to add in some water features or I want to add in crop cover. Um, so that people can see where those birds' nest sites are. Or you want to add in roads to give people more spatial context and figure out, okay, this is where these nests are in position to the rest of the geography that they are hosted in. Or you might say to yourself, you know, I could just use a really good image of like a Google Maps image of, of the land, and that would be enough for me. And so stepping back and thinking to yourself, hmm, okay, this is what I have, and this is what I need. And then thinking, well, who would create those data sets? Um, so if you're thinking about 
those geographical features, it's probably going to be the province or the federal government, because we're talking about authoritative sources of data. The same way that you have authoritative journal sources, um, so too we have authoritative data sources. And those data sources, those authoritative sources are those ones that you can trust. Um, they will have posted their licenses so you know where it is, um, what it is you can do with it. They will have posted who the author is so that you can contact them and be like, hey, there's a weird little square up in the top right corner of this data set. What's going on with it? Or what does this field code mean in for one of the attributes? So they the data is open and they have all these supports available to you so that you can make the best use of that data possible. A thing to remember is that to be able to map data in a GIS, you need microdata and your microdata is the thing that you're looking for patterns in and then some way to tie that into the GIS. So we talk in the jargon for it would be a geographic boundary file. So if we're thinking about census data, you have all of that CSV or tabular data that you have captured, and then you need to somehow link it to the ground. And so that would be like your dissemination areas or your provincial boundaries, those types of things. So you, if you go out and collect data, make sure it has some kind of location attribute tied to it so that you can use that location attribute, like a latitude and longitude or the name of a city, the name of a park, something like that, to tie it back to the geographic boundary file, and then you can map it. We are going to now explore a couple of different open data portals. The easiest way to think about it is that your smallest geography, so like your municipal data portal, it is going to have the most detailed information about a small area. And the larger in geography you go, so the province will have mapped significantly more data than the city of Winnipeg, but in less detail. And then the same with the federal government, they will have mapped the entire country, but not nearly is in nearly as much granularity as the city of Winnipeg will. So thinking about how big your study area is or how big your study is, is it the entire country? Is it the entire Western hemisphere? Those types of questions. Or is it a couple of lots in St. Boniface in Winnipeg? That will really help you figure out where you're going to find your data sets. So the city of Winnipeg's open data portal, they've done a lot with it in the last few years it's at data.winnipeg.ca. And the easiest way to navigate it is you can go right to maps, or what I like to do is go up to the open data catalog in the top left corner of the screen. And if we click on it, it gives us both the maps that have been made with those data sets that you could have linked to from that tile on the main page, but also the data sets themselves. And so here we can see all of these different data sets that are associated with the data portal. You can link, you can look at the different authority records. So some of these data sets will have been made by community members. Those might not be what you're looking for. You're probably going to be wanting to search for official records. So using that official um, limiter or filter on the side will help you out. The other interesting thing with the city of Winnipeg is they have, instead of having a central data team, each team within the city of Winnipeg or each kind of department has their own data manager. So you've got the assessment and taxation office. They're doing all of your like values for different parcels. You have the parks department, you have property planning and development, you have water and waste. And so that's going back to thinking about who's created the data you want. 
if instead of browsing through all of these records, you know for darn sure that your data is going to be coming from Winnipeg Transit or Winnipeg Water and Waste, then you can use that delimiter right off the bat by clicking on it to just get the data sets that have come out from that department. So if we are looking for our data sets and like, what can we do with them from here? Water and waste, if you're ever looking for elevation data, LIDAR data is what you're going to be looking for for the city of Winnipeg. They have the 2011 and the 2021 available to you. And you would need to convert it if you're looking to make contours. That's how you're going to make detailed contour data for your city or for your study area. When we click on that main page for the data set, we can see right now how easy it is to contact the data set owner. You can send them an email right from here. We can see what license they are for that data, they have for that data set, how often it's updated and then background information about those different data sets. And it's these description fields that are going to be really, really useful to you so that we know what units they're in, the horizontal datum, the vertical datum. And so that's the type of information that we need to be able to view our data in the GIS. And then they have a couple of different ways to download. You can either download the tiles directly from this table, or if we go back, we can go to the map of the LiDAR data, and it gives you a preview of what that data looks like. And then you can hover over one of those individual tiles because you're like, okay, I really want this, oh, I will zoom in a little. Um, you really want this data that is maybe at Armstrong Point in the Crook of the River. So you're like, oh, this is the one I want instead of grabbing it from um, that overall table. The other data sets, so you have your tiled data sets and then you have your other types of downloadable data. And if I go to, what is an easy one? The tree inventory. So the tree inventory is all of the trees for the city. You can, those same types of data are available to you about the data, so metadata, and you can see measured in centimeters, those descriptive fields that you're interested in. And then if you want to export, you can export the entire data set by using the export button. You select the format that you're interested in, or you can go to the map of the data. See it all. Give it a second to load. And then use the export button again. And so that is how you can access data sets from the city of Winnipeg's open data site. The province of Manitoba is in the process of moving their data into a centralized data portal that looks a lot more like that city of Winnipeg one we just visited. Um, so half of its data is one place, the other half is another place, and I'll talk about accessing it in more detail afterwards, but the main place that geospatial data lives right now for the province of Manitoba is on the Manitoba Land Initiative site. And so from the MLI site, um, you can go to download digital maps. Here is their license with all of the conditions of use. You need to say that you have read and you agree. And then you can see all of the different themes of their maps along the side of the data set. 
right along the side of the website. And if you are ever looking for coordinate systems for the projection of the data, that information is found on this main page as in this case, NAD83, it's UTM zone 14N. And the software might ask you for that at a certain point. So popular places to go here are if you are looking for your soils maps or a lot of people come here for elevation data, digital imagery, so ortho images of the province, hydrography, and then those topographic maps. And so the one that you guys will probably be using the most is the one that comes from Manitoba Con Conservation and it's under the one to 20,000. So it's just drill down, click on those links and then figure out where in the province you are. If we're looking for Winnipeg, if we go to 62I, then we can zoom in farther and see, oh, oh no, it was actually in 62H. Um, and then you grab that code, but it's all blocked off in different quadrants. You can download the GIF to give you an overview. This is that metadata file I was talking about. They have it in a .doc format. And so you can open it in Word to view it. If you are a CAD user, you can grab it as a DXF file, or if you're a GIS user, you can grab it as a shape file. And then you just click on the file format and it downloads to your computer. They say reviewed the last time, 2004. That's not actually the case. That's the last time this website was reviewed, um, not the individual data sets. And if you read the .doc files, they will give you that information there as well. So that's the MLI site in a nutshell. And then another place that has gotten money in the last couple of years is the Manitoba Collaborative Data Portal. And it's where a bunch of people or a bunch of different organizations have come together because they were like, oh man, all of us are making these individual data portals. Wouldn't it be great if we could just come together and put all of our data in a similar safe place, pool funds on and pool funds and resources? And their main focus is health equity, social justice, public accountability, environmental sustainability. You can download their reports, all of that kind of thing. And it's really great how they have integrated all of these different themes and provide links out to other data portals. So we can look at the demographic dashboards, different web mapping, their map gallery, And all of those reports and data that are integrated within them have a data dictionary associated with them and the user manuals. They have their quick start guides, links right here to their data dictionary to see what all the terms mean. And then you can download that data from right inside the portal. And then the final place that I'm going to point you guys to is GeoGratis. And GeoGratis is the federal government's geographic data portal. It is available in English, English and French. And they have moved to this method of data dissemination where now they are promoting the use of these geospatial data extraction wi wizards which are fine, but sometimes they go down. And so that can be very annoying to work with. Um, how the wizards work is that you either figure out, you know what product you already want to, to extract from, so which data set is already the one you're looking for, or you browse to a specific location zoom in and then figure out what data sets are available at that one location and then you clip it out. So if we go and we browse to R3G 
let me say zoom two, we can see that we have three data sets that are associated with this area of Winnipeg that we can download. We can say, okay, I want Canvec. And Canvec is like the topographic data set for the entire country of Canada. It has less detail than that one that we looked at from the province of Manitoba. So I can say, I want that one. I want to use what's available in this window, or if you had a tile or a study area that you wanted to use to clip, they claim that you can use it. It's a bit disastrous. So I suggest not trying to load your own study area into, um, into this, just either use the window, then you say, okay, submit your job. And it will, you can say, your output format of choice. Do you want it as a geo database? Do you want it as a geo package, shape file, um, select your coordinate system? So if you know that you are going to be going into a Lambert conformal conic, if you know that you are your data has been collected, the GPS unit that you use to collect your own research data was in WGS84 then you're going to, it makes your life easier if you export it in that using that statistical model, or if you know that your data set was captured using NAT83, then you would export using that coordinate system. Select the scale, enter your email address and submit. And sometimes what happens is it just crashes. And then you end up feeling very frustrated and overwhelmed with your life after you've done that like six times in a row because your assignments due in a week and you can't even download your base data. So how do you get around that? They have, they should still have the download GeoGratis downloads directory. And the download directory is basically like an index to that entire page. And it links directly to the FTP server where all of this data is living. So it's like their front facing website crashes, but then you can always go and extract your data from that same place that their website is extracting it from. And so I will put that link in the chat. Oops. And then you can go in and say, oh, I want that same Canvec data. And then you know you need to know what file format you want. So you probably want a shape file, which is the .shp one. And then you can say you want your admin boundaries, elevation, hydro, land, man-made features, any of the labels resource management or transport. We say transport, then we say which province we want, and then you just bury down within each of these files. It downloads it to your desktop, and then you would use your study area to punch out the area you're interested in within that. If you ever end up in that boat, you can always send me an email, book a consultation, and we can walk through it together. StatsCan website, it's not really my kettle of fish. If you're looking for Statistics Canada data and support in accessing census data, your data librarian is Cody Fullerton, and he can help you get access to that StatsCan data and all of the different licenses. So, but your cursory access is if you are looking for Statistics Canada data, going to the data ta tab from Statistics Canada site will take you to the data sets that are openly available. There are also many data sets within Statistics Canada that are not openly available and they fall under the Data Liberation Initiative um, license. And that's Cody is our institutional rep for accessing that data.
and I will show you where to find his contact information after this. So library access points for accessing all of these data sets. It makes your life a little bit easier if there is some kind of a list being like, hey, these are authoritative sources. So the same way that the library puts together subject guides for your to, for, to find books and journal articles for your subject areas, we have data subject guides as well. And then we also have the GIS Hub, which is our institutional geospatial data repository. And next, I will go through accessing those. So if you are looking for data subject guides through the University of Manitoba Libraries website, I will first close some of these tabs because it's getting to be a little bit much. Okay, so via the UML website. So from the main page of the library website, to find those data subject guides, if you scroll down a little bit and then go to help and subject guides, this is Cody. He is the one that can help you with your statistical data. Um, and that was an aside. As we go down into the subjects, if you just scroll down a little bit, until you get to data. Then there are three data guides. The two we're going to be focusing on, well, one is the main one that we'll be focusing on today. And I will just show you the data and statistics guide and how to access Cody. So if you're ever looking for census data access, he's got his guide that's split up into the different federal, provincial, and municipal levels international. If you're looking for help citing data, he has links there. And then for all of the different types of Statistics Canada data, um, and then links to different repositories that you have access to as University of Manitoba members. If you need support in accessing this data, email him, or you can use his schedule booking to book a link with or book a consultation with him directly in his calendar. And then we have my GIS and geovisualization guide. And then these are links to all of the diff tons and tons and tons of different data sites that are available to you. On my main page, I have top resources. So places that you most likely that a lot of people go to to access data. So we have GIS Hub, which is that geospatial data repository I was talking about. Uh, data MB, which is where all of that province of Manitoba data is going to. Um, so some of it, so like the fish data lives in data MB right now, but fish data is pretty niche. Fish data and COVID data uh, and a little bit of crop data is there right now. Geogratis, where we were before, the Manitoba land inventory, where we looked at that topographic data another link to the GIS hub, and then City of Winnipeg's open data. Links to access library GIS data, sign into ArcGIS online, and get back to that workshop page that we looked at at the beginning of the session. And then now, if we look at the data sources tab, I have things organized by things that are licensed. So specific to the University of Manitoba, you need your UMNet ID and password to access these. And then external open data collections. So local scale, provincial scale, and then split up between base data and more specialized um, data sets. And then if you're looking for nearby US states or city portals, I have links to those in here as well. Data at a national scale for US and Canada, specialized data. So if you're looking for the Canada Land Survey, I provide you with a link directly there. Climate data, all of that kind of thing. And then further on at an international scale. So open street map, time zones, digital elevation models, all of those, if you're looking for the different ports, um, I have links to all of those GIS data sets in here. If you ever come across a dead link, please let me know. 
I run a script every couple of weeks to check for dead links, but if you hit it at a time when I have not recently ran um, ran a link check, then yeah, always email me. If you are looking for interactive maps and atlases, then we have links to the University of Manitoba Libraries where we have our atlas, our, our hard copy um, map cabinets, digital collections from the city of Winnipeg, Port city of Portage La Prairie, Steinbeck, provincial scale maps, so like the agri maps, different economic profiles, Manitoba property assessment maps, oil and gas resources for Northern Manitoba, and then at a national scale, Atlas of Canada, Geogratis again, Geoscan, all of the nautical charts. For imagery, links to the city of Winnipeg open data portal. If you are ever looking for air photos, we do not have a good collection of air photos at the University of Manitoba libraries. Um, and so the National Air Photo Library from Natural Resources Canada, they have a lot of different air photos that you need to purchase. They're like $33 a piece um, ish. And so you can access your air photos there. And then global imagery. If you are doing historical research, then there is the University of Manitoba Archives. Um, you can book you can book a meeting with an archivist, and they will help you access their archival information. And then the previous map librarian at the University of Manitoba, he put together this pretty crazy um, historical maps resource. So he digitized a bunch of them and has put them online as openly available some and has done his best to fill out the metadata for them. There's also license history. You can see it's, it is public, good for reuse in certain situations. So make sure you click and see what all rights reserved mean in this case. And I have that split out into, because he's got hundreds of maps in there. Uh, maps that come from the historical atlas of Manitoba, fire insurance plans, towns and cities, Arctic, a bunch of stuff from our campus, city of Winnipeg historical maps, then some external collections of historical resources. So from the city of Winnipeg archives, from the provincial archives, Library and Archive Canada, and then just some really cool old map collections um, that are avail that are available digitally to look at. Links to software and tools. So if you are just getting started in GIS and trying to figure out what tool is right for you, um, I have some links here. If you're looking for online gazetteers or georeferencing and geocoding tools. And then a geospatial data citation guide, because the same way that you are citing your journal articles and books, so too you need to be citing your software and your data sets that you're using. And so this guide provides links and support to do that. If you're ever looking to send me an email, you can either send me an email or just directly book an online consultation with me. And I'm happy to help you find data from there. The other place to find data is what I call our GIS hub. And there are two ways to access the GIS hub data, data site. Um, the first link is for if you are not using Esri products. So if you aren't using ArcGIS online, you are not using um, ArcGIS Pro, then I suggest using the UML GIS site. And it is our data repository. It'll ask you to sign in in the top right corner with your email address and your password. You can search by location and by object. So if we search for Winnipeg, 
Then we can see the different, those licensed data sets that we talked about before, those proprietary data sets from the city of Winnipeg that they've shared with us. So if we click on the first one, city of Winnipeg, downtown limit, then you can, it will give us a preview as it loads. And you can click the download button to download it. You can view the license details of what, how you can use that data. And then sometimes all you really need to do, you don't need to use a GIS. All you really need to do is take a screenshot of a map. And so, and maybe you need to like drop a point or something like that on it. And so this tool in here, in, in the GIS hub allows you to do that. So if we go back two levels to the GIS hub, you can also browse for the different data sets. So another vendor that we have in here is DMTI and they create data sets um, for, for Canada. So if we're looking for, we've got them split up between boundary files, environment, infrastructure, and things that are created by humans. So if we click on environment, oh, there is, it also sometimes when I'm sharing my screen decides that that is too much sharing for Yes. So if I sign out, and then sign back in. Okay, it's refreshed itself. So then if we go to DMTI, so now because I'm sharing my screen, it will not allow me to share those data sets. But the same way that we saw that list a couple minutes ago for, um, for the city of Winnipeg, there is another vendor in there, DMTI, and you can see like trail data, transport data, census data, uh, different hotels, all of that kind of thing. If you're ever looking for links to open data portals, they are available here or links to the different ArcGIS online portals. We have those available at the bottom there. The other way to access this data is if you are an ArcGIS online user, then you can sign in to ArcGIS online. And then if you go directly to the gallery tab, all of those data sets are available in here. So these are those DMTI ones I was talking about where they have accommodation points, administrative areas, the different arenas, antennas, bridges, and all of that. And so if we click on one of them, then we can take it right into ArcGIS Online or ArcGIS Pro, the desktop. If we wanna publish it to a service, if we want to export the data, if we want to view the metadata for the data, you've got your item description, 
and you have the terms of use that are visible right there for you. So two ways to access that data. If you have a data set that you think the city of Winnipeg might have and you need access to it, you need to sign to submit a data sharing agreement with them. Um, and part of my role at the University of Manitoba Libraries is to facilitate that. So it includes a cover, cover page, a contracts form, the data sharing agreement that is stamped and signed by legal, and then a screenshot of your study area. Another thing to think about is access. So there's nothing wrong with Googling, but be aware of Google. So Google is going to always try and be helpful to you. And so based on your search history, it might not be giving you the most authoritative data sets as your first results. So stepping back and thinking to yourself, okay, I need to think about the object I'm looking for, specifically what attribute I'm looking for, and then the file type. And so what that would look like is maybe you are looking for um, the province of Manitoba being the object, the population being the attribute, and then the file type being .shp or a shape file. So you would, so your search would look like province of Manitoba population .shp. And if you put that in Google search bar, it will return shape files for you. And then always be thinking about those authoritative data sites. Four key points. Think about your timelines. So that request through legal counsel, that can take up to 48 days. So if your assignment is due in two weeks, probably not going to be the best use of your time. And maybe you want to consider using a different data set. Um, also, these types of things do take time to manipulate and get to play well with your own research data set. And so thinking about those projections. So if you know what projection you have captured your own research data in, being able to say, okay, this is how I project my own data so it matches with the downloaded data, or maybe instead of doing that, you will reproject that data that you have downloaded to match with your own data set. So everything just has to match is what you want to remember. Um, if you're using Esri software or ESRI software, it is very good at making your data look like it is on top of each other. It's called projecting on the fly. But if your data is in two statistical models and you're trying to run analysis on it, that analysis probably will not be correct. So if you're trying to calculate distance, calculate area, and your data is in two different projections, that's not going to work out well for you, or the tool will just not run. Um, in terms of licenses, just always be aware of your licenses, and then stop and think about currency. So if you're looking for population data, if you find something that is from an authoritative source, you're like, oh man, Statistics Canada data, that's going to be great for me, but it's from 1991, probably not going to be reasonable for a current day analysis of Winnipeg, but maybe something like your river data, that's going to be fine if it is from 1991. Um, so just stepping back and saying like, when is currency important? And that is all for me today. If you have questions about accessing data, um, you can always send me an email, book a consultation, anything like that. We have a couple minutes left. I'm going to stop recording now.